Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Double Reward. Inshallah, today's surah is a very special surah. It's Surat An Nasr. This surah is cause for hope for the believers. It brings them happiness. But it's also a cause for mourning and sadness. The reason is that the surah promises to bring victory to the believers. And that's a good thing, and it makes the believers happy. But it also talk, announces the, the, the death of the Prophet ﷺ, and that's why it's cause for mourning. And some of the close uh, companions of the Prophet understood this. They knew that the surah was telling us that the Prophet ﷺ had completed his mission, that the Prophet ﷺ had finished his assignment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him and entrusted to him. And so they knew that that meant the end. Let's listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. I seek refuge in Allah from Satan the accursed. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح. When comes the help of Allah and the conquest. وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا And you see that the people enter Allah's religion in crowds. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا Verily, so glorify the praises of your Lord and ask for His forgiveness. Verily, he is the one who accepts the repentance and forgives. You see how the surah is talking about when the victory of Allah comes and people enter the religion of Allah in crowds? That's the Prophet ﷺ's mission, to deliver the message of Islam to people. And so when they did come and they did enter the religion in crowds and in jama'at in large numbers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to ask for his forgiveness. Okay. Now let's practice the surah and see how we can learn to read it, recite it uh, correctly, insha'Allah. Are you guys ready here? Yes. Insha'Allah. Yes. All right. ar rahman ar rahim Bismillahir rahman ar rahim Ida jaa nasrullahi wal fatih Ida jaa nasrullahi wal fatih وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا ورأيت سيدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا إنه كان توابا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر 
فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا إنه كان توابا الحمد لله ما شاء الله very good now this surah is very inspiring because um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to ask for forgiveness and He's promising us that He's going to forgive. He says, and ask for His forgiveness. Verily, He is the one who accepts the repentance and forgives. So there's a lot of hope in this surah. Okay, let's read this individually so we can uh, focus on specific issues. Uh, Usama, why don't you read the surah for us? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> No, start <laughs> over. Yeah, it's okay. It's fine. Um, إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح. أرأيت الناس يدخلون في في دين الله. Okay, let's backtrack and let's say that. I'll say the surah and then you can say it after me, inshallah. إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا ورأيت الناس يدخلون إلى يدخلون, يدخلون في دين, في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا إنه كان توابا Okay, now that was very good. You know, I noticed with these small little surahs, uh, of course it depends on the person, but sometimes we get so concerned with the big surahs, you know, like Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al Imran and Surah Al Maida. These surahs are like, you know, some of them are, you know, Thirty pages long or even longer. Sometimes we forget to brush up on the little surahs. And one way to help you do that is if you get used to saying them in your prayers. So uh, usually what some of us do uh, is that we read Al-Fatiha and then we read the same surah every single time. What you can do though, and uh, what the teachers and the shiuch say you should do, is read Al-Fatiha and then read the surahs that you know and then try to vary a little bit. Read more surahs. Read surahs you haven't read in a long time. That will uh, you know, strengthen your connection and it will bring back those surahs that you memorized and that you forgot about. But it's important to do that and it'll give life to your prayer, inshallah. Okay. So uh, you think you can do that, Usama? Inshallah. Okay, that's very good. Um, Faidus, why don't you read the surah for us, please? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا ما شاء الله thank you أحسنت that was very beautiful good job um, Ahmed, uh, you, can you read that surah for us? Sure. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ida jaa nasr Allah wal fath, wa raayt al-nas yadkhuluna fi din Allah afwaja, fasbih bihamd Rabbika fas. Wastaghfir. Wastaghfir. Innu kana tawaba. Good. Mashallah. Good job. Uh, Taha, yes. can you read it for us? Yes. We want to hear your beautiful voice. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ida ja anasrullah wal fatah. Waraita nas yadhuluna fi din Allah afwaja. Fasabih bihamdi rabbika wa staghfir. Innahu kana tawaba. Very good, mashaAllah. May Allah bless you. Now I noticed that uh, some of us, when we were pronouncing the word yadkhuluna, we were saying yadkhuluna. Uh, technically, the right way to say this is, say, is to say yadkhuluna. Okay, so let's practice that together and see if we can improve that. Yadkhuluna. 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 
Yad Khuluna. Yad Khuluna. Okay. Usama, I think I want to hear um, that, uh, that ayah from you again because um, I felt like that was a little bit weak. So if you could start from Wara'ayta Nasa Yad Khuluna. The whole ayah? If you could say it, yeah, that would be nice. Wara'ayta Nasa Yad Khuluna. No, it's, ca- it's got to be stronger. Let's practice that. Wara'ayta Nasa Yad Khuluna. Wara'ayta Nasa Yad Khuluna. Yad Khuluna? Khuluna. Yeah. Okay, let's say just that one, one word. Khuluna. No, Yad Khuluna. Yad Khuluna. Yad Khuluna. Yad Khuluna. Okay. Uh, Ahmed, can have you practice that uh, verse too? Wara'ayta nasa Yad Khuluna. Go ahead. Wara'ayta nasa Yad Khuluna. Okay, fi dini lahi aflaja. Very good, mashaAllah. Tayyib, uh, inshallah, we're going to stop for break. And uh, when we come back from the break, we're going to uh, talk about tanween and uh, some other very important topics. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Inshallah, we're going to be talking today about a very, very important topic, and that is the topic of tanween. This is very important because if you know what tanween is, it'll be smooth sailing after this, inshallah. Because you need tanween for almost uh, all of the rules, or a vast majority of the rules that we're going to cover, you need to know what tanween is. So, first, let's get used to this word. Let's get used to saying it. Say it with me tanween. Ten ween. Ten ween. Ten ween. Ten ween. Now, as a student of the Quran, you're going to have a very long career with ten ween. So try to get used to it and try to learn it now, inshallah. Now, the first thing is we want to look at some examples. Uh, now, the best way to look at ten ween is to first find out what it looks like. And as you can see, uh, the first word that we have up is Muhammadan. Say that with me, Muhammadan. 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 That second word is pronounced Muhammadin. Say it with me, Muhammadin. 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 And that third one is pronounced Muhammadun. Say it with me, Muhammadun. 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 Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay. Now, if you look at that uh, first word, you see uh, there are, there's an alif there at the very end. And on top of the alif, you see something that looks like a fatha. But actually, it's not a fatha. There are two fathas, not one. So, let's recall. If there was one fatha, we would have said muhammada, right? That's what we covered when we were covering um, the dal sound. But that second fatha means we say Muhammadan, okay. So let's look at let's pr- let's practice the difference between um, it with tanween and without. Without tanween, it's Muhammad. With tanween, it's Muhammadan. Let's say that Muhammad. Muhammad. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Muhammad. Muhammad. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. You see there that extra line? It adds an extra noon sound at, at the end. Listen very carefully. Muhammadan. Do you hear that? Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, let's see here. That uh, dal that has a kasra on top of it. Actually, it's um, beneath it. Actually, that's not a kasra. That's two kasras. So instead of saying Muhammadi, we're going to say Muhammadin. Say it with me. Muhammadin. 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 Now that last one you see, on top of that dal, there's a little dhamma. Actually, there are two. So that means we're going to say, 
Muhammadun. Say it with me. Muhammadun. 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 So all together we have and repeat after me. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Muhammadin. Muhammadin. Muhammadun. Muhammadun. Very good. Let's look at another example. This other example is the word Rasul. Okay? The first one, there's an alif on the end. And just like Muhammad, instead of having one fatha, it has two. So instead of saying Rasul or Rasula, we're going to say Rasulan. Say it with me Rasulan. 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 That second one, um, it has a dal. I'm sorry, it has a lamb. And beneath the lamb, you see two kasras, not one. So we say, Rasulin. Say it with me. Rasulin. 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 And that third one has two dhammas. And that is pronounced Rasulun. Say it with me. Rasulun. 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 All right, so all together and say it with me. We have Rasulan, Rasulan, Rasulin, Rasulin, Rasulun, Rasulun. Okay, now you've got it. You've got Tanween. Now you know that whenever you have two marks instead of just one, you're going to add an extra noon sound. So you're going to say instead of saying Muhammadu, you're going to say Muhammadun. And instead of saying Rasulu, you're going to say Rasulun. You guys think you've got that? Yes. Yep. Think that's pretty clear? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. clear. Okay, so let's ask a question here. So what's the difference between a Dhamma and Tanween, Usama? A Dhamma, you would say Lu. Du. Okay, why don't you give me a word? How would you pronounce a word that the last letter of it had a Dhamma on it? You can, you can use Muhammad if you want, or Usama. Actually, no, let's stay away from Usama. Uh, Muhammad is fine. Muhammadun. Muhammadun. Muhammadu. Okay, very good. Can you explain to me, like, uh, in terms of how they look? How can you find out? How can you tell that you, there is Tanween? By looking if at the page. If it's Tanween, the marks will be double. Exactly. They'll be doubled. Very good, mashallah. Um, Toha? Yes? You think you, uh, you, you're clear about the difference between the and the Tanween? Yes. Okay, let me ask you a question. Um, so, uh, if you're looking at a page, how are you going to know you have Tanween? How does a Tanween look? Two marks. Two marks, exactly. So, instead of having like uh, one Dhamma, you just have two. That's very good, mashallah. Uh, Ahmed, mm -hmm. so uh, what does that extra mark do in terms of sound? It adds um, a noon sound to the end. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, this here is a very, very important point. If you notice, that extra noon is second. Okay? Listen. Muhammadun. I didn't say Muhammadu, Muhammadunu. I didn't say Muhammaduna or Muhammaduni. I said Muhammadun. That noon, that noon of Tanween is also second. Sama, do you see that? Yes. Okay. And that's why we're studying these two things together. Because both of them share this quality, this property, is that both of these noons are second. Okay, now these poor letters, or these two poor sounds, the noon as sakina and at tanween, are always getting pushed around by the letters. You got letters behind them, taking these noons and doing all sorts of strange things. So, uh, and that's what we're learning to dweed for, so that we're not surprised by these things. So to drive the point home uh, in a more strong fashion, I want you to imagine you have a class of letters. So you're looking in the class, and you see your lamb sitting over there, and you see your ra sitting on a desk, and you see all 28 letters of the alphabet sitting in their desks. Then you've got basically three letters, the, the noon, the lamb, and the meme. These letters are getting bullied around. The other letters are changing their personality, they're influencing them, they're, they're doing all sorts of strange things. Okay? And that's what Ilm al is about. We're going to be looking at the Nun as and the Tanween. We're going to be looking at the letter that comes after it. 
And then we're going to say, well, what is this letter doing to a noon? A sakina. So it can do one of four things. So suppose you have a word, like, for example, min shar. Let's say that together. Min shar. Min shar. Min shar. Min shar. Okay. Now, that fir what's the first word in that, uh, that phrase that I said? Usama? Min. No, the first word. Min. Good. And the second word was? Shar. Good. Now, that noon that you, s that you heard in min, was that sakin? Yes. Okay. And then coming after it, there was what letter? Min shar. Sheen. Sheen. Now, when we're reading a newspaper, we say min shar. But when we're reading the Qur'an, we don't say that. We say min shar. So the question is, what happened to that noon? When we were reading in the newspaper, outside and away from the Qur'an, we said min shar. But in the Qur'an, we said min shar. Sama, did you hear that noon? No. That's right, it's gone. It was silenced. And the reason is, is because we have that sheen sound coming up after it. That sheen sound um, meant that we should silence that noon. Let's do another example. Um, suppose you're uh, reading in another newspaper, or you're reading in a book, and you come across the two words, men yu'min. Okay? You've got men yu'min. Men is the first word, and it ends with the noon, men. And then, the word after that is yu'min, and it starts with a ya. So you say, men yu'min. But in the Qur'an, we don't say that. In the Qur'an we say, May yu'min. Okay? That noon in men disappeared. Where did it go? I didn't even articulate it with my mouth. I made another sound. Um, and that's what we're going to learn today. And how did I know to make that sound? Because there was a ya coming after the noon. Now this might sound tricky, but actually it's very organized. So let's break up our letters here into uh, categories and see what they do to a noon. Uh, the first category is the alif, the hamza, the ha, the kha, the ayn, and the ghayn. These letters are nice letters. These letters don't do anything. When you've got that noon, and then you've got a hamza coming after it, you pronounce that noon exactly like you would in normal speech. You pronounce it exactly, you articulate it completely. When you've got a noon and then after it a ha sound, you pronounce that noon exactly like you would normally. It doesn't do anything to the noon sound. So uh, let's look at uh, an example. An hum. Okay, let's say that first word together. An. 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 Hum. Hum. Did you hear that noon sakin on the first word in an? Yeah. Did you hear that, Fedus? Yeah, I have that. Okay. Now, that, that second word, it starts with ayn, an an. Okay? So when we've got that noon and then the ayn coming right after it, we pronounce it completely, we articulate it completely. Okay? So you can think of these letters, uh, the alif, the hamza, the ha, and the kha, and the ayn, and the ghayn as nice letters. Okay. What happens when uh, we have the uh, noon sound and then coming after it, ba? Well, in this case, we have a case of switched identity. What happens is that noon comes up, and then the moment the, the bat comes up after it, it switches. Instead of sounding like a noon, it starts to sound like a meme. And then what happens when we have um, any of the, uh, a ya, for example, or a ra? Well, when we have those letters, you've got the noon and the ya coming up next, um, you have a totally different effect. And that is, um, the, ne the letter starts to affect the noon. And you see those letters up on your screen. The ya, the ra, the meem, the lam, the waw, and the noon. Now, uh, there's one other category of letters, uh, which uh, uh, when these letters come after the noon, they hide the noon. The noon starts to, you know, hide. Um, and you can't hear the sound uh, very good. 
So let's uh, pause a moment here and start looking at these different sounds that the noon makes. Uh, the first sound is when the noon is not influenced at all. It's pronounced exactly like it is in normal speech. The th second effect is the noon switches. It, instead of being pronounced like a noon, starts being pronounced like a meme. And the third effect is it starts to get influenced. The letter that's coming after it starts to give it some of its properties. And the sound sounds kind of like a noon, but kind of like the letter that sound comes after it. And then the fourth effect is when you have uh, the noon starts to hide. You can't really hear the noon. The, the noon sound has kind of uh, disappeared. So let's kind of, uh, uh, let's take a moment here and make sure that we've got these things down. All right. Um, let's ask a few questions. Ahmed. Mm -hmm. uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, are all the letters the same? Uh, do you feel, are, do you, are all the letters the same, or are some letters kind of weak and they get affected by other letters that are coming before them or after them? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so you've got some letters, you know, uh, they're kind of weak, you know? Yeah. If you've got uh, another letter that's coming after it, it might change the way it, so it sounds. Yeah. Okay, that's very good. Can you remember the different things that can happen to the noon? Yes. Depending on the letter that comes after it? Yes. Okay, why don't you tell me what that is? There's um, where um, it gets influenced. Okay, so it gets influenced, meaning that it takes certain properties yeah, from the okay. letter that's coming after yeah, it. from the letter. Yeah. It's coming after good, it. Good, good. It gets influenced. Mm -hmm. And then there's uh, another effect. Yeah. Where it just hides. Okay, so, very you know, good. <laughs> you can't... Okay. Uh, meaning that you can't... Uh, you can't see it? You can't see it. And uh, do you remember what the other two effects are? Mm. I think I might need some help. Okay, no mm. problem. Students. And inshallah, there. we're gonna uh, we're gonna close with this thing. The other two effects are when the noon switches. It instead of being a noon, it starts acting like a meme. And the third effect is nothing at all. It, it's pronounced and articulated exactly like it is in normal speech. Okay, that's enough for today, inshallah. And then tomorrow we're going to start working on the letters and working on drills and practices. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.